Hey everyone, this is Paul here with MemberPress. And in today's video, we're going to cover how to set up invoicing using Zapier, MemberPress, and Invoiced.com. Now, I'm just running a free 14-day trial of Invoiced.com to try this out. I haven't actually done this before, so we can learn together and we'll go through this. Um, so after I set up my Invoiced.com account, I did go to Settings developers and I created a new API key here and after you create an API key it will sh uh, add it down here so you'll click show secret to get the API key and then in Zapier you'll click on my apps and search for invoiced and connect it with that API key now I've already done that and I've also already connected uh, the member press developer tools to Zapier using the API key uh, that you'll find here in the settings. So I've got both of my apps connected. Now we just need to get them working together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up an offline payment gateway in MemberPress. Now the reason for this is uh, we can't use Stripe because that'll charge the customer right away. We can't use PayPal because that'll charge the customer right away. Authorize.net, the same kind of deal. So uh, we want to use invoicing so that the customer can pay at their leisure. And the nice thing about invoicing is it opens us up to additional payment methods that are not supported within Stripe, or excuse me, within MemberPress. So I'm going to come down here and you can see this is a testing site of mine. So I've got lots of different gateways and uh, you'll just see lots of data on this site because it is a testing site. But we're going to add a new gateway here. And I'm going to call this Send Me an Invoice. We will email you an invoice when your registration is completed. Okay. Now I'm going to leave this admin must manually complete transactions off. And the reason for that is when this is enabled, the event um, that we're going to be listening for in Zapier uh, is not going to be sent if this option is enabled. So uh, the customer can still get access to your site after signing up, uh, but they will get the invoice emailed to them. And if they don't pay it, you could always come in and uh, remove their access. So anyways, we're going to do send me an invoice offline payment and we'll update the options. Okay, so now we've got our gateway. Now let's go add a membership in MemberPress. And a membership is just something that your users will subscribe to. So I'm gonna make this membership, I'll just call it uh, basic membership uh, plan. And we'll say it's gonna be $50 and it will give them access for a lifetime. So let me go ahead and publish this. Okay, now before we can get things working in Zapier the way we need, because it needs some test data to pull in. So I'm gonna just sign up a user to this membership just so we have some test data that Zapier can pull in. So I'm gonna open this in an incognito window. And first name, we'll call this, invo let's see. Well, I'll just use John Doe. John Doe, email John Doe invoiced at email.com. Now, 11 plus 2 is 13. And we're going to choose send me an invoice as the payment method and sign up. Okay, that should have created enough test data that we can go to Zapier and get started. So we're gonna say, make a new Zap. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna listen for a completed transaction in MemberPress. So I'm gonna say, if the transaction is completed, then continue. And I will select my MemberPress account, the app that I connected to MemberPress. Okay, we're gonna test the trigger. 
and with any luck it'll pull in John Doe. There we go, John Doe invoiced. So the one we just tested is the data that it pulled in. So that is fantastic. And I'm gonna copy this gateway ID. You'll see this is the ID of our gateway. Let me go back to the settings and show you where you could find this. The reason we're gonna do this is we don't wanna create an invoice if they pay through Stripe or through PayPal. We only wanna create an invoice if they paid using this offline payment method. So here it is, the ID shows right here on the member press settings. And it's also associated with the transaction that the user just signed up with. So we're gonna go ahead and click continue. And next I want to do a filter step. And this allows me to say only continue if something is the case. So I'm gonna say only continue if, and let's go find that gateway ID. I must have skipped it somewhere. Let me search again. Oh, there it is. So we're gonna say only continue if gateway exactly matches, and we'll paste in that ID from our offline payment gateway. And we'll hit continue. And you can say, and you can see here it says your zap would have continued. So in this case, it would have continued and gone on to the next step. So I'll say done editing. And now we'll add a do this step. So we, we're listening for a completed transaction in member press. Then we're checking to make sure that transaction belongs to the offline gateway that we set up. And then if it does, then we'll continue on and do the next thing. The next thing we want to do is go to invoiced. And we're going to say, um, I actually like this one down here under the search. It's called find or create a customer. So we're going to find or create a customer in our invoiced account. So we'll hit continue. And what that means is it'll try to find an existing customer if it can. If not, um, it'll create a new customer. Okay, so here it's looking for an account, um, an invoiced account. So I'm just going to select my app that I connected here. Okay, and so it's going to try searching by name, account number, or email address. I'm going to search by email because I think that's going to be the best for uniqueness with MemberPress. So we'll search for the member email from step one where the transaction was completed. So we'll say create if the user does not exist. Okay, so we're searching by email and then if it doesn't find a match then we'll create a new customer. So auto pay, we're gonna set that to no because we don't want customers to be billed automatically without getting their permission or having them pay it themselves. Uh, terms, let's say uh, do within seven days of receipt. And you can set whatever you want there. Um, entity type, I'm gonna say individual. If you're dealing only business to business then you maybe would want to choose company but I'm gonna choose individual because my customers are going to be individuals. Phone number, I'm gonna skip through all this stuff here. And notes, I'm gonna leave a little note that just says created via Zapier plus member press. That way, as I'm going through my invoiced account later, um, you know, if I have my invoiced account set up to other applications besides member press, um, I can quickly identify which ones came through uh, Zapier uh, because of a, a completed transaction in member press. Now I didn't see where to put the name in. Maybe I need to set it up here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the name in. I really don't want to do that because if the customer changes their name in member press, it may fail to match it here. But let's go ahead and put it in because I think it will. It's required actually. So there you go. We can't not put it in. Okay, so we're gonna send this over and it'll create the new customer if they don't exist. So let's hit continue. You can see here, if I come to my dashboard and click on customers, I don't have any customers here in invoiced yet. So now if I hit test and continue, and you can see it completed successfully, there were no errors. 
And if I refresh this, it should have created the customer because they did not already exist. And there he is, John Doe. So that works. That's fantastic. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we created the customer, but next we need to actually send them an invoice. So let's click done editing on that step and we're gonna add another step. And this time we're gonna search for invoiced again. Okay, and we're gonna say, this time we're gonna create an invoice. Let's click next. And we'll choose our invoice app that we've connected earlier. Click continue. Okay, so the customer is going to be the customer that was returned. So I'm gonna choose custom, because if I choose this user here, it's gonna send all invoices to this user. And I do not want that to happen. So I'm gonna say custom. And step three, the find or create customer should have returned an ID. Oh, there it is right there. If you don't see it here, you might need to click show all options to, to see it. But I do see it here, so I'm gonna say ID. That way, you know, as these steps, um, I may have inserted that twice. Yep, I did. Okay, let me delete one of those. Um, what this does is, for each new customer it creates, you're gonna get a different ID. So we wanna make sure that we're choosing the ID from step three so that it's unique to each customer rather than sending all invoices from all customers to only one user. Uh, that would not be great. So uh, name is gonna be the item name, which is gonna be the name of our membership. So that's gonna be found in step one from the transaction completed step. So I'm gonna choose membership title there. Quantity is one and the unit cost is also gonna be found from step one, which will be the amount. And I'm gonna to choose total. If you had taxes involved, um, you'd wanna to choose total. In this case, I'm not doing taxes, but if I were, the amount would be less than the total uh, because the total includes the taxes. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose total. Invoice number, let's go ahead and use the transaction ID which is 3239. I think that will allow us to do some lookups with this later if we needed to. Um, okay, and then send to the customer, email the customer. Yes, we definitely want to email the customer and save the invoice as a draft, no. And once again, in the notes, I'm just gonna say created via Zapier plus member press, just so I have a note in the future of how this invoice came to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and test and continue. And with any luck, that should push through a invoice for this customer. So let me just refresh here and see. And there it is. You can see they have one $50 invoice. So if I click on invoices here, I can see there's an invoice for John Doe. It is sent but not paid. And let's just see if we can view that invoice. So I'm gonna say client view URL. Just This is just so I can just see it. So this is what your, your customer would see in their email. They could click to pay the invoice. And once it was paid, it would be updated um, right within your invoiced account. So it would say, instead of sent, it would say uh, paid for example. And I think that's it. Um, we now have uh, the ability to invoice customers when they join through MemberPress. So uh, the one downside to this is um, that I did have to leave this manually complete option disabled, otherwise it just doesn't connect to Zapier. And the reason for that is when this is enabled, the transaction in MemberPress gets created as pending. And you notice in step one here, we're listening for completed transactions. So that pending transaction is not gonna come through here. So I had to leave this disabled in order for the completed transaction to get pushed through to Zapier. So like I was saying, the downside to that is the customer, even though they haven't paid their invoice yet, they are still seen by member press as an active user because they have this completed transaction. So. If I look at the member here, 
on my members list, you can see John Doe invoice does show up as an active user. So like I said, if you don't like that, you can come here to their transaction after the fact and just mark it pending. And then the user won't have access, but they did still get the email. And then once they pay their invoice, you could come back in here and mark it as complete. Or we could even possibly set up a zap um, that would set it to uh, complete automatically. So in fact, maybe let's look at that. I don't honestly know if that will work, but let's give it a try. So I wonder if we could even set it to pending. I'm going to check member press really quick just for one thing. I wanted to see if there was an update transaction option. No. Okay. So we will not be able to automatically set the transaction to pending or complete using the built-in uh, member press zap, but we can do it through, let me delete this step. What we could do is use Stripe, or excuse me, uh, Zapier's webhooks. And this actually gives us access to do some pretty cool things uh, using the member press developer tools that aren't built into the uh, member press Zapier app. So if technical things are not your thing, you can stop the video here. Don't do this step five, but I'm going to continue on for those of you who are a little bit more technical and uh, maybe want to try to get this automated a little bit more. So we're going to do a post request and we're going to hit continue. Okay, so it wants to know what URL it should be sending the data to. So we're going to go to member press. We're going to click on developer tools and we will click on REST API and I'm going to choose update transaction right here. Now this will give me some sample data, but what I'm after is this URL right here. So I'm going to copy this URL. I'm not copying the ID part because we're going to insert that differently. We'll paste this in here and then to get the ID, we're going to do step one and we're going to get that transaction ID. So we're going to update this transaction by this URL. The payload type is going to be JSON. That's what member press API uses. And our data. So we need to actually go look at the member press docs for this. So let me look up our API events, developer tools, event triggers. That's the one we're after. So let's find transactions and look for updating. Oh wait, these are the events. Sorry, I wanted actions. Developer tools, actions. That's what I was after. Okay. Transactions, update transaction. And this just tells us what parameters we need to send over. So we're sending the ID and really the only thing I want to send over is a status because I'm going to change it from completed back to pending because I want to automate um, this user not getting access to the site until they've paid. So we're going to say the data. So we're looking for a status right here. Status. Status is going to go back to pending. Okay. Wrap the request in array. No. There's no file attached. Unflatten. Select no here. Uh, basic auth, we are going to leave empty. We're not going to use basic auth. And the headers, we're going to say member press all in uppercase API key. It may work if it's not in uppercase, but um, member press has it here in uppercase. So let's go ahead and copy our API key. You can also find it up here at the top. So we're going to paste in our API key as the value here. And that should authenticate us to be able to update this transaction. So now I'm going to go find this transaction in MemberPress. 
we can see it's pending. So I'm gonna mark it back to complete because I wanna test it and see if it actually does work. Um, Cause I have never tried this before. So let's refresh the page. Okay, so we've got a complete transaction. We're telling Zapier to update the transaction and set the status. Where did that go? Set the status back to pending. And pending needs to be in lowercase. Uh, no spaces before, no spaces after, just pending, just like it is there. So I'm going to hit continue. And let's go ahead and test and continue. And we'll see if it works. So we didn't get any errors. That's a good sign. Let's refresh this and see if our status went to pending. And look at that. That totally worked. That's awesome. So now we've automated listening for a completed transaction, only continue if it's the offline gateway, find or create a customer and invoice, create the invoice for the customer in invoice, and then set the transaction in member press back to pending so that the user does not get access to the content on the site until they actually pay. So this is pretty cool. I'm going to call this um, completed transaction in member press to invoiced customer plus invoice. Okay, so this is actually really cool, you guys. So we got our Zap set up that is going to automate all this invoice creation and sending for us, and it's going to make sure the user doesn't get access in member press. And now let's go ahead and create another Zap. Let's create another Zap that listens for a paid invoice from Invoiced and updates the transaction in member press um, and marks it back to complete so that the member will have access once they've paid. And this will all be automated. So this is going to be, I'm hoping this works. Like I said, I've never done this, but if it works, it would be really cool. So we want to listen for an invoice paid in full. Cool. So we'll hit continue. We'll select our invoiced app. Continue. Okay, we'll test our trigger. Now we haven't paid one, so it's saying we can't find any data yet. Um, so let's go ahead and just, we'll just mark this paid. I don't know how to do that yet, but let's see if we can figure it out. Actions, receive payment. I don't know what that means. Okay, let's say the customer paid us with cash received on this day. The amount was 50 notes. I'll say just testing with Zapier. Create. And I see the status of our invoice went to paid. So maybe if we try this again, let me hit test trigger again. Ah, there we go. It found our paid invoice. Great, so now we've got all this data we can use uh, in our next steps, which is going to be great. So let's continue. So when our invoice is paid in full, then we want to update a transaction in member press. So I'm going to choose member press. And oh, excuse me, we can't update through the member press app. We need to use a Zapier webhook. So again, this is a little bit more technical, but we'll search for the web hooks zap and we're going to say choose an action we're going to send a post again and we're going to post to the member press developer tools url so you'll go to your developer tools you'll click on rest api you'll choose update transaction again we already copied this url but i'm going to show you where to find it one more time just in case you forgot We'll copy all the way up to that last slash, but we will not copy the ID. So we'll put in that, and then we're going to try to get the ID from our invoice number. Do you remember we set the invoice number to the transaction ID earlier? And now we can do a lookup using this ID, and it's going to allow us to update this transaction in member press. So it's all pretty cool. Um, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I think it opens the door to doing some pretty cool things. So. Uh, the data is we're going to set the status of the transaction back to complete.
Because remember, we automated it to pending so that the user would lose access. Now we're setting it to complete so that they will have access again. Requ uh, wrap request and array is no. Unflatten, no. Um, I did select JSON up here. Sorry, I forgot to point that out. Selected JSON. And we're going to skip basic auth and use the emberpress API key header instead. And let me just go copy that API key again. Now, one thing I should mention about the API key, if you were to refresh this API key and regenerate a new one here, um, that would break any existing zaps that use this API key. So uh, if you are going to regenerate your API key, be sure to update any zaps or anything else you may have connected to your developer tools um, as that will definitely break um, your zap. So let's go ahead and hit continue. So I want to go back to the transaction. We'll see it should be set to pending. And there we go. It's set to pending. And now... If we test this zap with any luck, there's no errors and it will set it back to complete. So let's check that out. Ah, check that out. That's pretty cool. So that worked out fantastic. So now we have two zaps. I'm going to call this one um, complete member press transaction when invoice invoice is paid. Okay, and that's it. So now if we go back here, you can see we have our two zaps. The one that listens for a completed transaction in member press, it creates an invoice customer and sends them an invoice. And then it sets the transaction to pending in member press so the user doesn't get access until they pay. Then once the invoice is paid, um, it automates setting their transaction back to complete automatically. So uh, this is pretty neat stuff. Uh, I'm going to turn these on. And let's actually do a real live test and see if we can get this working. So I'm going to turn this on. Okay. So we're going to go back to member press. And we're going to go to memberships. <clears throat> and I think I called it basic membership plan. There it is. So I'm going to open this in an incognito window so we can test this as a new member. Okay, we're going to call this, his first name is just going to be invoiced, last name test, email invoiced test at email.com, 8 plus 3 is 11. And we're going to choose send me an invoice as the payment method, and we will sign up. Now we'll see if we come here to their subscriptions page, it will say they are active. And the reason for that is the, the zap hasn't run yet to set them back to pending. Um, so in just a few minutes, that zap should run. Ah, see, it set it to pending. Now it says I have no act, active, dis, active subscriptions to display. So that worked out automatically. We didn't have to do anything to make that happen aside from setting up the zaps, of course. Now, let's go back to invoiced, and we'll mark this invoiced as paid. So we'll just pretend we're the customer and we got the link. Um, let me refresh this so I, I'm not seeing the new invoice. Oh, maybe that was it. Yeah, this is it. Okay, so outstanding. If I, collect, if I select all, we'll see the John Doe one that's already paid too. So anyways, okay. So we're going to click on this invoice and I'm going to just say client view URL. I'm going to go to it and we'll pay it as if we are the customer. Okay, we're paying by credit card. We've got our email address there, the card number. I'm just going to use a fake card because this is not a real payment. Expiration, we'll say 12 of 22, 1, 2, 3. And We'll make this our default payment method for the future. Hey, there we go, it worked. So now that's been paid. So with any luck, we'll refresh this and within, yep, the zap already ran, we're back to active. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, again, this is kind of a third party app, um, but this is one way to do invoicing. Um, and it probably would work with other ones too, but this is the one that I thought might work best for this test.